I come to Hawaii every winter. I visit all the major islands. I love it. My favorite activity is watching tourists from Canada and Europe get severely sunburned. They've just come from Canada where it's been winter for six months. Their skin hasn't seen the sun for over 200 days. And in their pasty white apologetic Canadian kind of way, they think they're ready for 12 shirtless hours in the Hawaiian sun. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. I also think the skin is a barometer telling you how intelligent someone is. The redder they are, the dumber they are. It's like a window into their psyche. It's also offensive because after they're in glowing red lobster mode, it's like they're in red face. And that's cultural appropriation against redheads like me. On Maui, some people go whale watching. I go Steven Tyler watching. I love watching them pop out of obscure places you'd never expect. He's like Maui's mascot. First time I encountered him, I was on a whale watching tour boat. Steven Tyler's driving the boat. So I asked him, Steven Tyler, why are you driving the boat? He looked at me and said, these things don't drive themselves, kid. Well played, Steven Tyler. He also definitely didn't know how to drive a boat. We all got very seasick. It was sweet emotion. And so is the terror I feel driving the road to Hana as I'm desperately trying not to plunge off the side of dangerous cliffs that people pretend are roads. And I love talking with transplants that have lived on Maui for over a year. They have no idea how weird they've gotten. It's like they've become their own species. Prolonged eye contact, talking in an airy voice, absurdly long hugs and moving slow. They're either incredibly high, which they definitely are, or they're incredibly tapped in spiritually, which they definitely think they are. They all tell me how Mother Maui's taken them on such a wild spiritual ride since they've been here, which makes sense because they also tell me how Maui's the heart chakra of the islands. And that makes a lot of sense because usually chakras are made out of island. My favorite part of Maui, the Iao Valley. Its majesticness inspires me to not want to be anywhere else in the world. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll become a weird transplant living here permanently. I just want to give it some time though, so home prices have a chance to escalate even higher before I move here. Being in Oahu during the winter holidays is great. The water's warm, the people are happy, and walking around Honolulu gives you the experience of being inside a sardine can. You get all the best elements of being in a severely overcrowded city with the best elements of being on a beautiful island. It's confusing. It's like not being in Hawaii when you're in Hawaii. And also 100% of Japan visits Honolulu at this time, which is great. I just wish there could be more people here all at once. In Honolulu, I always pay homage to the Duke statue on Waikiki. Thinking about all the amazing things he did leaves me feeling mostly crappy about myself because I haven't done anything even close in comparison with him. But the crappier I feel about myself, the more inspired I am. Thank you, Duke. On Kauai, I high-five my unshowered spiritual brother sleeping in hammocks by the water on my way to papayas because I like to go to the healthiest shop on the island. There I get a kombucha so I can hopefully poop later in the day and I get an $11 sandwich loaded with lettuce, tomato, bean sprouts, and 72 grain bread. All the things that leave me feeling cleansed and still hungry after I've eaten. Next, I stop at the Kauai Juice Company in Kapa'a. I always get a green glow juice because the green juice industrial complex controls my psyche. Sometimes I also get an avatar blue juice. It evokes the taste sensation of mystery. And also because it's blue and I like to pretend I know what that'll do for my health. And I never leave without being talked into taking a cleansing shot that tastes like fire. If it hurts, it's good for you. And if it makes you feel like it'll give you disaster pants later on, then it's even better for you. From there, I drive up to Princeville because I want to pretend I'm rich like everybody up there. And on my way, I stop at Healthy Hut because it's another health food vortex. But mostly because the disaster pants is about to hit and I need to use the bathroom. Then I like to make a pilgrimage to the Nepali coast to go body surfing. And it inspires me seeing all the free-spirited people living in the spiritual refugee camp there. I also enjoy having all my belongings stolen from me. It's very free-spirited of them. And because Kauai is the third eye chakra, I always see it coming. On the big island, I love being that guy that says, now I know why they call it the big island. 
because it's an island. Being in Pune, the thing I love most is all the hippies. The only thing I love more than that is all the sketchy hippies. It is inspiringly confusing to see so many people dedicated to living on a strict fruitarian diet while also doing meth. On the big island, I always stop in and buy some spiritual art from a local artist like Robin Chance to validate my level of spiritual superiority. And indeed it does, especially because the big island is the root chakra, aka the anal chakra. Kona side or Hilo side? Both for me. It kind of makes me bisexual towards the big island. I always ask, what's the most intelligent touristy thing I could do? Answer, take a tour of a flowing volcano. What could go wrong? One more thing, you beautiful Hawaiian weirdo. I'm bringing my comedy show to you. My upcoming Hawaiian tour is December 26th through the 29th. I'll be on Oahu, Maui, the Big Island, and Kauai. And I'd love to have you come out and see my comedy show. Last year, completely sold out. Tickets are going fast. You can grab yours. The link in the description of this video will go to my website, awakenwithjp.com events. Look forward to seeing you soon, Hawaii.